Who wants to do the intro? You can, I'd love Kaya. to do. Yeah, well, oh, yeah okay. you should yeah, definitely Kaya take should. it. All right, so what's the, uh, what episode number is this? 154? 155. 55, pussy boy. 55. That does not sound right. Yep. Okay, well, Just whatever. Just do it, go. Yeah, all right, Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to episode 155 of the official podcast today. We have John McAfee, a man of many hats, Whoa. crypto kingpin, cybersecurity expert, and outlaw at large. John, it's <laughs> it's interesting it's to honor. get a hold of a man that has successfully eluded so many governments. I feel a little special. <laughs> you know, I, I think that you know, I've, I've done it so many times. It's it's become a um, second nature to me. I I should write a book or give instructions on it for those in similar circumstances. <laughs> Yeah, how to be an outlaw for dummies, basically. <laughs> I mean, you're like a real life Raymond Reddington traveling in the Latin Americas, dodging cartels and governments. So I kind of want to hear the whole story. Now, when I brought your name up, I immediately got private messages from everyone. Kaya, don't you know, he's a, he's a serial killer. He rapes people. He murders people. <laughs> All these, there's just these, there's a maelstrom of... Wouldn't you want to have that person on for sure then? I yeah. Mean, <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, we were, we were all very excited to have you on. Trust me. <laughs> I'm going to be let down if those rumors are false. <laughs> John, I'll be up front. I, I was a little hesitant at first because I was worried if this shit wouldn't south, you'd like come after us like Ed Gein and turn our skin into furniture. <laughs> I mean, the, fact, the fact that you are talking to me now means that you will be monitored. Uh, and and tagged and um, uh, followed probably for the next five years. So bring it. Um, uh, oh, John, yeah, this is, John, you know, I have a legal obligation. I have a legal obligation to let you know this conversation will be recorded. I would expect nothing less. And I, I can also tell you this conversation is being recorded by probably five uh, U.S. government covert agencies. So. Uh, just you know, stand in line. Oh god! <laughs> what about the Australian right. agencies? Because I'm in Australia at the moment. Am, am, am I at risk, John? <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> okay, so it's I want to give time. everyone who doesn't know you. Let's do a little. I want to go over your life. I mean, like I said, there's this maelstrom of rumors and gossip around your life where. Uh, I read a Medium article that you wrote, and you, you yourself mentions that practically every article these days written about you includes the word murder. So there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear your side of the story. How did you go from being the first, uh, you know, you founded McAfee, the company you created the world's first antivirus. And from there, how do you go from that to being on the run from the US government and Belize, I believe? Well, I, I decided to be free and just do whatever I damn well pleased that didn't harm anybody. Um, and at the same time, tell the truth about the, the shit that I was observing. Um, as a result, you know, you make enemies if you tell the truth. And if you tell the truth about higher level of people or, or systems in the world, then <laughs> you make some powerful enemies. Now, let me make this clear. I had absolutely nothing to do with Gregory Falls murder. Um, <laughs> and I, I believe I believe, I, I believe now and, and believed even then that uh, the Belizean government killed him as an excuse um, to take me in for questioning from, from which I would never have um, mm -hmm. uh, come back. Oh, yeah. So I looked into that a little bit. I watched the documentary one that you have condemned since uh, it was on Showtime, the gringo one, gringo something, something or the other by, what was the guy's name? Jeff Wise? Jeff Wise, you bet. Yeah, so, I mean, your story is you moved to Belize basically to semi-retire. It looked like a beautiful place, I mean, from the videos that I've seen. And you were neighbors with this guy who threatened to poison your dog, and then your dog did end up getting poisoned. And then the guy... Yes who allegedly poisoned your dogs was allegedly murdered. Now, I don't see a big problem with that. I can see why other people would have a problem with this. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. He's trying to implicate you, John. Don't listen to Kaya. Yeah. He's no, doing I'm, the good cop, bad cop. 
<laughs> I'm just saying if hypothetically you supposedly allegedly had done this, I understand. I mean, if somebody poisoned my dog, <laughs> I'd be pretty fucking pissed off too. <laughs> But I watched this we shouldn't be laughing. A man, a man was, a man was in fact murdered. And although that that is a very funny story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I but to be clear, to be clear, to be clear, he never threatened to poison my dogs. At least not to me. And we barely spoke in in five years. We barely spoke fifty words in five years. And ninety percent of those were, "Hey, how are you?" And that was it. Um, uh, and I didn't believe it because the man had dogs and loved dogs. Such people don't go out and poison fucking dogs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so let's get that clear. No, so that that part was was simply manufactured um, by okay. the Belizean government and then the press and by speculators. Um, so the, but, as far as um, the government but some, goes, somebody did. I'm sorry. As far as the government and the police goes in Belize, so your contention has always been, if I handed myself over for questioning, I never would have seen the light of day again. They would kill me, they would torture me, they would somehow get a confession out of me. And so I wa I'm watching this documentary and the police chief basically ad says this himself. He said, well, in the guy's hair, we found somebody's nail, but well, we don't have DNA testing in Belize yet. All we have is eyewitnesses and, you know, if the murderer admits it otherwise we can't convict anyone <laughs> and i'm watching this thinking okay so you make shit up that's what eyewitness testimony means right absolutely or getting a confession out of someone that's absolutely. And, yeah, let, me, let me give you an example of how uh the countries like police actually function i mean the military the police the police chiefs the judges everybody everybody is corrupt to the point that it's not even it's not even hidden um, I mean, I, I used to, it reminded me of, of uh, when I used to, to sell drugs in Mexico back in the 70s. And, um, you know, you, you just know that the chief of police uh, is dealing drugs. All of them do. I mean, this is mm -hmm. back to life. Uh, you know, my favorite uh, question, if I ever did get caught, and I did frequently, um, is, uh, you know, these drugs, I said, listen. Uh, they belong to uh, uh, Commissioner Jenkins, um, and I'm delivering them for him. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> well, let me, let me finish, okay? Let me finish. So mm -hmm. right off the bat, they know that the commissioner's dealing drugs. They also know that uh, the higher-level officials love to make friends with white people. God knows why, but they just do. And um, so that, that, that would make sense. And if they really, and if they really press the issue, I would simply be like, how do you know the commissioner? I said, well, you know, is this net personal business? I said, but here, pull out my cell phone, scroll down. You have to do this in advance. You've got to put the commissioner's name in your phone with some bogus phone number and say, here, why don't you call him and ask him yourself? Right? Uh, so, no, nobody in the right mind. Okay, okay. nobody. In the right fucking mind, this guy, a commissioner, you know, if, uh, this guy says he's got your drugs. Please, God, <laughs> you know that guy. Right from the face of the earth after they burned his, after they burned his family in front of his eyes. So no, that shit doesn't go down. But that's what this is. That is the system that this is. So you, do you, you think, definitely do you think I am going to voluntarily, knowing that the government for almost a year was trying to collect me legally, right? Um, couldn't do it illegally. I was surrounded by guards all the time, and it would cause a ruckus. You'd have known that I had been taken. So um, so you think I am now, after you're at war with the government, going to let them take me into custody? Well, nobody is that crazy. All right. Well, we've seen that a lot, right? Even recently with the cartel taking over Mexico, basically. I mean, and they just rule that entire uh, corner of the planet, it seems like. It's not... I mean, the corruption in the government is insane. I'm sure you saw the news about how they let El Chapo's son go. I think the cop who arrested El Chapo's son got mowed down by 150 bullets recently, a couple of days ago, just as yeah. punishment yeah. for pulling him over. Good God. This is an everyday occurrence. So so anyway, no, I, I, I was not going to turn myself in. And so I did the only thing I could do, which is go on the run. Um, um, I was on the run for over a month in Belize. 
uh, before I finally managed uh, an escape with the help of um, uh, Vice Magazine senior editor um, Rocco Castoro and uh, a, a photographer, Robert King, a war photographer, who we concocted an escape and, and escaped into Guatemala, where I was immediately arrested, of course. Yeah, did those um, guys get you caught? <laughs> did, so, from what I read, didn't, vi didn't a vice photographer get you caught because he forgot to remove the metadata from the photos he took? It wasn't him. It was it was Rocco, the senior editor of Vice, who neglected to tell his people, please remove the exit information. So no. <laughs> so, so we um you know we, we were I was a half an hour in freedom at a hotel with a gorgeous swimming pool, beautiful women by my side. Uh, I was about ready to go, listen, we'll just hang here for a few months until we figure out what to do. And um, 30 minutes later, my exact location. Uh, is is all over the fucking internet with satellite images of the very pool I was about to jump into and enjoy. Um, um, and instead, and, uh, you got arrested and you found yourself uh, by your own admission faking Guatemala. heart attacks at the police Here's station now. to stall. Well, yeah, just just because. Okay, all right. So I, I didn't get arrested because as soon as I found out, we. We hit it. We hit the road again. Now I'm on the wrong, not from the Belizean police, which is trivial. No, but from the Guatemalan federales. They are the meanest and the most competent um, security forces on this planet. So now I'm in deep shit. But we met, we managed to evade for two days. We managed to evade uh, capture. Um, and we had quite an adventure doing that. First thing we did is... Um, uh, Sam, Samantha, the girl I was with, immediately, I mean, she's, she knows what to do, ran to the room, packed the bags, came back and said, we are leaving them behind. I go, we can't because they'll get killed by the authorities. When they come. Anyway, so um, we, Sam got us a taxi five minutes into the ride, um, and we were, we were headed north uh, to a village about oh, 100 miles uh, north of Fronteras, which is where we were. And from Terrace, by the way, is, is no man's land. There's no police. There's nothing there. Um, just, uh, you know, criminals from all over the world, whether you, you know, you took money from your country or, you know, whacked a prime minister, who knows? You're there. Nobody has last names. No one asks any fucking questions, which is why I chose that place. However, if the federales are coming, it won't make no difference. Anyway, we're in a cab. First thing I do is ask the cab driver if he has a phone. And he does one of these little flip things. And I said, oh, I like this. I'll give you $500 cash for it right now. <laughs> yes. So I took the phone, rolled, rolled down the window, broke the phone in half, and then threw it out of the window into the jungle as we're flying by. So I probably shouldn't have done that because at that point, I think he realized, because, you know, this whole thing has been in world news for a long time. Um, and Guatemala is right next door to police. So, so it finally hit him that, oh, my God, this is John McAfee. I saw his picture in the paper. He's going to kill me. Seriously. So he started panicking. And I said, oh, whoa, everything's OK. It was OK. I'm in Spanish. And um, I said, do you have any music? And he said, so, see, uh, see. See, but he knew he was about to die. He was just, you know, stop. <laughs> Why don't you just lean over to snap his neck and steal his car then, John? Yeah. yeah. We're committed. Yeah, so I go, so I go, que tipo de musica? And he goes, uh, Rolling Stones. I go, oh, me, we're in Fat City. So he put on Rolling Stones, gimme shelter. I made him turn up the volume to its absolute top. Okay, the cab was shaking. And I sat in the back seat and sang along with Keith, um, uh, or along with Mick, <laughs> the, um, uh, the entire song. And somehow, I think he, he thought, you know what? This crazy old bastard is not going to kill me. <laughs> he's, you know, he's definitely crazy. But. And so for the rest of the two-hour trip, uh, things were cool. Anyway, I, that was, I'm sorry. I got, I got sidetracked. What was the question, sir? <laughs> That's okay. So you fled from Belize to Guatemala where you were uh, 
you entered the country illegally, and that's what they had a beef about. And you got sent back to the yes. U.S., right? You managed to stall long enough yes. for your a lawyer to get you back into the U.S. So yes. I, I read that you had uh, another problem recently where you got uh, detained for a couple of days, like for four days. What happened here? What, recently? Yeah. In, uh, you mean a few, mo a few months ago? Yeah. Oh, I was just, that. That, was a minor, that was just a minor thing. The CIA tried to collect me again in Cuba. Let me tell you a little story. So we were in Cuba because I, I found out through my, my informants that um, the, the Bahamian government was going to come collect me and turn me over to the U.S. So we left the Bahamas about two and a half hours later and uh, went to Cuba. Things were fine in Cuba. The, the Cuban government called Janice and I in and said, you have 72 hours to leave the country. I go, okay, you bet. And we're in Cuba. <laughs> you know, so, and the guy said that the, the American government has requested that we, we turn you to America. Um, but um, we think it would be better if you just leave. I go, oh, fuck me. Yes, thank you, people. <laughs> All right, so we went immediately to the Dominican Republic. It took four and a half days. And when we pulled into port, we were immediately surrounded by paramilitary troops with, with fully automatic weapons, all of them on high alert. Like I say, so four days later, we get out of jail in, in the Dominican Republic, um, and they tell us we're sending you back to the U.S. And I go, that's senseless. Why? He says, well, that's just the way it has to be. And I go, but we didn't come from the U.S. We came from Cuba. Send us back to Cuba. Um, and the, all the people in the party were not U.S. citizens. And so, yeah, so I knew what was happening. God damn it. Mm. They got here before. Me. And so, so anyway, I had hired, after this four days, I had already hired two lawyers. So we were in immigration, Janice and I and my staff. You know, all of which had been arrested. And um, uh, I, my lawyers came in. I said, I want you to, because it was a, a, a weekday during the day, I want you to file a brief with the court uh, asking that I not be removed from the Dominican Republic until the courts can see what's happening. Now, they couldn't possibly turn that down because it was international news. Well, certainly in that part of the world, <laughs> maybe, no, maybe no one else heard about it, but it was all over the Spanish papers. But anyway, um, so they said, well, that'll take two hours. And I said, I'll get it. Now, they're, they're about to immediately ship Janice and I back to America. I says, don't worry about it. I will get your two hours. I went over to Janice. And I said, Janice, don't panic. Everything's cool. I then collapsed on the floor in convulsions. That's the second time that's worked for me. Before. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, that's that's tried, yeah, it's right. He's got his strategy. Tactics. Play dead. So anyway, they, so it, so long. Make a long story short. They shipped me off to the hospital. Um, it, it took twenty minutes to get there. Fifteen minutes to get checked in. Another, you know, forty-five minutes for the doctors to look at me. And meanwhile, they're all looking at me very skeptically. It's kind of hard to fool. A group of doctors when you're trying to fake an illness, right? So they, they are all they are all looking at me very skeptically, and I'm looking at my watch. And Janice is with me now. Uh, they're about to put Janice on the plane, by the way. So Janice is with me, um, and the lawyers come in with a piece of paper, and I go, "Fuck me!" We barely squeaked by. Fifteen minutes later, the world changed. We went from being in a jail with rusty bars, no windows, uh, full of flies, mosquitoes, and filth. Uh, oh, but they did have mattresses. God damn it, that's rare in one of those jails. But in any case, um, <laughs> I, I was I was camping for the mattresses. But um, we went from that, that to a, a, a limousine to the VIP section of the Santo Domingo Air International Airport where we were served with by people in fucking tuxedos. All right. So, <laughs> because if, if this case, if this case had gone to the courts, I mean, it would have unraveled the Dominican Republic government and embarrassed the U S beyond anything imaginable because this was a CIA setup. They had illegally boarded our boat 
um, before we were even allowed to check into the country. They didn't let us talk to customs, immigration, nothing. And they stupidly, why? Here's the problem. The CIA sets up all these spectacularly subtle <laughs> um, web works. And then when you finally get to the bottom, like the Dominican uh, Republic police, you know, which have at, at best a third grade education, and most can, right? But many can, but, but they video everything. Those are used to, you know, grabbing drug dealers on everything, including everything they did, which is now on fucking records. And if it was shown that they actually boarded our boat prior to allowing me to talk to customs, all right? And they charged me with bringing weapons into the country without declaring them. I said, why would I fucking declare them? You won't let me talk to the person I must declare them to. But that was all videoed. So, so is- had it gone to court, it, it would have unraveled a whole lot of shit. So we, we, we squeaked by, got to London, um, and that's the last place I'll identify that we have been in the past four months. <laughs> okay, I got you. What is their, <laughs> what's their official reason for hunting you? I know there aren't really any charges currently active ones against you for the uh, murder, so why is the U.S. government hunting you? Oh, they, they got a hunting license uh, that's still valid. And, um, you know, <laughs> if, they don't, if, they don't bag, if they don't bag me soon, uh, well, they got to get a new license. No, fuck me. Okay, the first and foremost, uh, I'm a libertarian. I believe that income taxes are illegal and unconstitutional. Amen. Um, and, and 10 years ago, almost, I stopped paying. <laughs> now I sent a letter. You're a uh, <laughs> we might have a clue. <laughs> no, not only did I not pay them, I didn't even file. I sent a letter to the government saying taxation is illegal. I'm not filing. You know where I live. Now, for eight years, nothing happened. I mean, why bother fucking with an old man who's already paid, you know, way over $50 million in taxes in his lifetime? Um, until I started getting on the stage and talking about how cryptocurrency uh, can free you uh, from, from the financial system which controls you now, including freeing you from income taxes if you truly believe they're an unjust law and choose not to cooperate. Well, here's how you can do it. Privacy coins, distributed exchange. Um, at that point, things changed. Um, I started getting letters from lawyers saying that, you know, they had had requests and subpoenas from various branches of the government. And on the 22nd of uh, January of this year, um, they convened a grand jury to indict Janice and I and four of my uh, compatriots uh, with unspecified tax crimes. Um, I heard about it. So, so they're hunting you because you became a symbol, basically, a symbol of tax evasion. The Batman of tax evasion? Yes. Yes. Right. So as long as I'm free, then it's an embarrassment to them. Good. Yeah. I hope you remain mm-hmm. free. John, yeah. well, just yeah. a few questions before we have to let you go. Our audience will kill us if we don't ask you about this. We will get lynched. Oh, Kaya, can I, can, I ask, can I ask the big one, the one I, I was talking about? Yeah, go. Okay, so John, I I really have been dying to know about this, and I'm sure a lot of people listening have as well. Can you give us more details on the whale fucking? Because we've heard that you participated at one point, and I would just love to know how that sort of thing is set up. What happens? Do you have to, like, get a group together? Can you do it on your own? What's the... All right, so so details. Okay, of course. The first thing you have to do once you've submerged and gone down 20 feet to find these the genitals... (laughs) <laughs> you have to stroke with both hands, and here's where people fuck up. They use one hand on either side of the stupid, <laughs> right? Very softly. Very softly. That causes the whale to slow down. Um, you know, and that's about a three minute process. Um, no, please, God. It was a joke. I said it was a joke, and it was more than a joke. It was a social fucking experiment. Because, so let's get real, people. Uh, we were talking, I was talking about humpback whales, 70,000 pounds, 50 feet long. Uh, they can destroy a medium-sized ship uh, just with a swipe <laughs> of their five to half a mile. Now, if you think some puny uh, human is going to, first of all, swim alongside at eight knots, which is impossible for humans, 
dive down 20 feet while swimming alongside at eight knots um, and manage to survive even touching a fucking whale in a private place. Um, well, then you, you, need, you, need to, you need to stop smoking rainbows and move out of your mother's basement. Well, if anyone could do it, John. <laughs> I, I think see, it's not that yeah. people believed it. I think it's that they wanted to believe it. <laughs> exactly. I, no, I, there was a lot of fan <laughs> theories, like fucking film theories going around at how John could have reasonably scientifically fucked a whale. I remember reading a whole bunch of different versions of the tall tale. Like it was a book of myths. <laughs> like it was a beached whale, a small whale, all kinds of shit. Or he swam into its pussy or something. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the whale just kept That's where he's right you. now. We got you, John. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you why I did this. Because all along I was doing private polls with people who were commenting. Over 50% of the people believed that I had fucked a 50,000 pound marine animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's not a bad thing to have people believe about you, is it? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot worse things. Yeah. Yes, but, but wait, here's the point, people. Here's the point. I, I don't just fuck with people to fuck with people. I fuck with people to learn things. And if I, some old man, not even, I, I don't know why it's the young people who really follow me okay, and tag along, but it, okay. Um, if I can convince half of the people of such an unbelievable thing, then what do you think our government is capable of with all of its resources? John, we got to get that's it. together sometime. We got to set up another yeah. episode. <laughs> is, we got to go deep. We got to go deep. There's right. a bunch of Yelling fucking... Uh, what? This I, is some profound shit, time, John. My I maintain okay. that there's a lot okay. of conspiracy theories that actually make sense. I will not readily reveal which ones i believe make sense but i would be down to discuss uh, yeah, hey i'll tell you what if you actually want to come and smoke with me then i, I don't give a shit what we discuss it's all going to be fun all right I, and thank well, you for having me on well hang on no thank but, you for coming yeah, on absolutely. thank you for Thanks coming, for coming, coming on, on john talk <laughs> right. to you guys later all right thank you talk again. to you Damn it, that was... Fuck, I, I didn't mean to imply that we were done. <laughs> Shit. No, he, sa he said that at the yeah, time. He, of the, I know, he, I know. He, I, he no, drew a hard line. I was hoping I yeah, could lull him he, into another long story so he would forget his schedule. Damn it. <laughs> nah, he, he immediately <laughs> uh, just kind of went, I have to go. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have Damn. to have him back on. That was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Holy shit. That was like a Tom Clancy story. I'm not going to lie, I, I'm a little disappointed the whale fucking wasn't real. That was, that felt like five minutes. Fuck, I'd get to tell him if you'd like to get in a two hour call with us or something. This guy, I bet if you get him high, this would be fucking amazing. You should, uh, you should schedule him again for the future so that we can have him back on at some point yeah. for a longer duration. Oh, you bet. Have him, do I get have him join us for a three year anniversary and do peppers and all that other shit. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, have him do a Carolina Reaper. <laughs> He won't be faking a heart attack then. That'd be genuine. <laughs> He'll fake one to get what out of it beforehand. Andrew, now that now that yeah. the guest has been on and, and, and gone, do you want to actually do an ad read quickly for, yeah, for we, Honey? We, perhaps? we really have to. Uh, shit, I accidentally closed Yeah, I mean, we could out. do them post. Isn't 30 uh, minutes too late anyway for the well, Honey no, one? Well, it's not, not We're already ready. I'm already ready to talk about Honey because it's free. Honey is a browser extension that automatically finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online. You can get the best deals at over 20,000 sites such as Amazon, eBay, Target, Best Buy, and more. I gotta let you guys know something. If you're on the run from the U.S. government, you're gonna need a lot of equipment. You might need a, a ski mask, maybe maybe a grappling hook, oh, fake, fake IDs, which I don't think you can buy online, <laughs> but maybe there's a seller that does have them. Oh, you bet you can. Honey... Oh, yeah. Honey is definitely going to cover a big majority of the supplies you're going to need to make sure that the Belizean police don't beat you to death. They have found over 10 million members, over a billion dollars in savings. They support 20,000 stores online and has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Chrome. 
store. If you're buying gifts this holiday season, which is coming faster than you think, then you need honey. If you're not, then you probably know someone who is. So just tell them about honey. It's free. It's really, really, really simple because you don't pay for it. Honey can You'll help feel make as sure... free as John McAfee if you use honey because God Ex damn, is that a brilliant service. I've saved so much money with honey. Please exactly. use honey. Honey can help you make sure you're getting the best price for whatever you're buying. It's free to use and installs in two clicks. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. Boys, I recently bought some batteries on the internet and they were discounted due to honey. And I didn't have to do jack shit. So I, I love honey. Uh, joinhoney.com slash official. Your stories are so lame in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> Did we ever... I, <laughs> I bought some batteries using the internet. <laughs> Meanwhile, John's uh, talking about espionage. I know. <laughs> escaping the government. God. Fucking I whales. Wait. Convincing people that he fucks whales. It's so great. Yeah. That was fucking great. To fucking out the US government. <laughs> But man, that really got me thinking. That really got me thinking. If he can convince the world that he's fucked whales, what animals can the government convince us that we should fuck? Or that we already have fucked. That we could there's, yet fuck. There's really no limit. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's right. And we never did find out how he how to pronounce his last name, did we? It's McAfee. Yeah, it's it's McAfee. McAfee. We looked it mm -hmm. up on yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Jackson, that mystery was solved before the episode started. <laughs> I guess I'm a bit behind on it. I love how it's just okay. he wears his lies on his sleeve, except the murder and the rape. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, you know, <laughs> I faked a heart attack to get out of the, uh, to get out of jail. I love it. <laughs> it's just fucking brilliant. I didn't get a chance to ask about Sia Coin. Sorry to any avid cryptocurrency fans and the few Sia Coin holders. Yeah, well, we had so many questions. Hmm. What were you going to ask about Sia Coin? Just what he thinks about it. He probably would have <laughs> left on the spot just for bringing it up. I had like, I had a whole <laughs> note sheet. I had like 90 more questions. I wish we had more time. I So he also has a new uh, token coin now called Epstein Didn't Kill Himself. Uh, I'm not making that up as a meme. That's <laughs> He actually just released that. <laughs> We should have asked him about Epstein as well. It would have been relevant. Yeah. Oh, Epstein, he probably could have talked for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, he probably knew who killed him. By the yeah, he probably personally <laughs> knew who killed him. He probably <laughs> killed him. He's going to re He's going to listen to this episode and listen to this part and go, those bastards, they outed me. <laughs> How can they do He's this? Listen to this. <laughs> so, I mean, if he does listen, John, no offense, but I am, I'm. So, on a scale of one to ten, I'm convinced of your guilt. Either like a three or a nine. I can't decide which it is, which it is. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, I, I spent all morning just basically doing my research and prep, just looking up his story and the the fucking documentary. His reply to the documentary. He has whole websites set up just to uh, reply to the documentary he has he found the people in the documentary and he put them on his youtube channel and videos for each of the people that were uh interviewed in a documentary and it looks like an isis video where they're all scared looking and they're saying no i was paid by showtime everything i said about <laughs> mr M mr john is, is a lie <laughs> so it's kind of funny to go through that shit it's fascinating though man this man's life um as far as the libertarian shit goes, he, he looks like the only sane one on that stage. I mean, you guys remember those libertarian debates, right? Where one of them starts stripping and then another one starts getting yeah. booed because he said that he wouldn't sell heroin to four-year-olds. Those people are fucking goofy. I like him not paying taxes for 10 years, too. I mean, wh what can you say? That's so just righteous. Does, how, how does he still have money, then? Is it from, from his antivirus... Like, I'm sure, wouldn't, if the government had an issue with him, wouldn't they just cut off the money flow? No, I mean, he has, well, I, he has, he probably McAfee. still has millions and millions and millions saved up. Yeah. And also yeah, he's but investing I'm, in It's crypto. the government. If the government really has a problem with him, couldn't they take that money away? He has it in offshore. Not, yeah, probably not. First. He, I mean, knowing him, he's one, probably got it in an offshore bank or a different bank. And two, he said he's also investing tons of it in crypto. So he's also probably just making money doing nothing. 
Well, he does a lot. No, he has a lot of uh, business ventures. He hasn't been with McAfee since, I don't know, three Late decades 90s, or something. Yeah. yeah. He left that a yeah. long time I, ago. I actually in fact, read a... Uh... I have this quote right here. Uh, when Intel bought McAfee, the company itself, and changed the name for a while, he said, I am now everlastingly grateful to Intel for freeing me from this terrible association with the worst software on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I read a uh, I read an article and a bunch of a bunch of different takes that half of what McAfee says on like Twitter and all that shit is him just being a weirdo, but the other half is he wants to devalue McAfee stock because he wants the company to fail. <laughs> well, so what contribute what like contribution did he have to McAfee where he wants he it to made fail it. so bad? He, he, he made actually, it. It's he, his name in it. No, I, I, I know it's his name in it, but was he just like a businessman that oh, funded no. it, so, or was actually, he actually I, in the lab I, programming I can, the antivirus? Wait, quick, Kai, I got this one. So I know this part. In college, he used to sell drugs, and from selling drugs, he moved on to like the software world, and he noticed that you know there really wasn't anything protecting these computers from a threat. So that's when he started develop, developing McAfee. And then eventually, I believe it was him that made the software too. And then he formed the whole company around what he created. So he's calling something that he directly made shit then? Because if he coded it. They took it over and no, they changed the it. the company. Right. So when he brought... Mm -hmm. He's talking about the company yeah. that they changed. So at the beginning, he, made, he founded the company, but he was bought out by investors because they thought that he was basically a bad image for the company. So he was bought out and that he didn't like where they took the company. So to him now, the uh, software is shit because it's... Uh, yeah, keep in yeah, mind, right. the, the antivirus he wrote is not the one that we all know. The, you know how it would nag you in the lower right? With like, oh, you're visiting this website. It's dangerous. And it will pop up every couple of seconds to remind you to renew your subscription. He has a whole video on YouTube called How to Uninstall McAfee Antivirus. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great video yeah it's a great fucking video <laughs> a man of with some sense of humor um what an interesting life man he's like the world's most interesting man from the commercials like real though it looks like him too it's crazy uh if anyone's mm -hmm. interested in the documentary it's gringo the dangerous life of john mcafee and he he's not happy about it so check out john's replies to the documentary too it's kind of funny What's his main issue with the documentary? Just that it kind of paints him in a bad light. Does does he actually so, care about how he's portrayed? Well, yeah. I mean, he's being hunted by the. Well, yeah, but does he care that people? Uh, yeah, I he guess cares. Like, the I mean, general he's... perception of him is that he's a he's a lunatic or something. Well, not just that. I mean, the general perception is that he murdered people, which I understand if. If he did not do it, if he's truthful, <laughs> then I would understand why he's pissed off. Uh, mm -hmm. what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, if you look into it, it's Billy's. And like he said, it's a it's a country full of corruption. So the documentary maker interviews a bunch of people who supposedly worked with him, his ex-girlfriends, the ones who said, oh, God damn it, I forgot to ask him about the shit hammock thing. Fuck. Oh, no, not the shit hammock. Fuck. Oh, oh. That's, probably, that's probably just another one of John's classic lies to see how far it spread on the internet. No, but his girlfriend spread it, though. It's So during the interview, his girlfriends <laughs> all independently well. verified that he would cut holes into the hammocks so they could sit in them and then poop in his mouth. And the, uh, All right, well... <laughs> that's, <laughs> I mean, she's a, she's a deep state plan. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> all 17 of my girlfriends, they're all CIA. I feel like that would probably be his response to that. Like they were they were bought out by the government or something to spread spread lies. I mean, so anyway, the, I, like the documentary makers and John, they're basically both using the same tactics. They're each saying that the other side paid the people in the documentary to say or whatever it is they wanted them to say. That they were all paid actors. Yeah, well, I mean, it's possible. <laughs> I just I just went on his Twitter to see like how he uh, interacts with people. And one of his latest tweets is lots of followers asking why I don't go on Joe Rogan's podcast. Been on with Joe before. I'm afraid I offended him. <laughs> Have reached out over the past four years to apologize, but no response from Joe. He carries a grudge. Wow. And then someone asked, someone asked, did you offend him though? The one I watched with you and him, you called, you called in. I, I didn't see the whole thing though. I didn't notice anything. Then he replied saying, it was not on the podcast that I offended him. It was in a Bangkok hotel. And it <laughs> 
involved multiple <laughs> multiple parties of unclear gender in a Samoan body guard. I cannot say more. It is not my place to do so. This man's a riot. I don't know what to believe with him, but it's fucking great. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that that's even kind of the fun part. He's like, he's Schrodinger's lunatic. Like, is he insane? Is he not? Do you really want to find out? Do you want to open the box and know the truth? <laughs> Mm. Uh, maybe he's living the life we all secretly want oh hell yeah oh, are you kidding me yeah he had when he sold McAfee it was for like, like I think it was a hundred million or a hundred million and some change like he absolutely has lived an incredible life oh he lost most of that unfortunately in the market crash in the 2007 yeah, but I mean, such, even, but... even still you have to imagine he still had a ton mm. mm-hmm Uh, he, he replied further, say, uh, someone asked, he mentioned you recently on a podcast and it was clear he'd forgotten if you'd ever been on and was clear you weren't even on his mind ever, let alone <laughs> held a grudge against you. And John replies, yes, he purposely buried that night in Bangkok deep in the recesses of his subconscious. I bet though that in the deep of night, he still hears the squealing of the goats. And the <laughs> And the faint oh hissing God. of the boa constrictor as the Russian tranny cleaned her pleasure from the snake. What the hell is this guy? <laughs> this is so great. I, I really do believe he's he's the perfect amount of just weird and wacky and also loves to fuck with people. And oh, results absolutely. And stuff like that. Oh, for sure. Uh, what is... So, yeah, here's another reply. It says, um, some stranger says, he just mentioned you in a previous podcast. Seemed like... Seem to like you, no sign of any grudge. John says, he buried the offense in his subconscious, involved a party in Bangkok, attended by trisexuals, trannies, albino <laughs> twins from Romania, three goats, a boa constrictor, a dominatrix from Russia, two anal fisting instructors, and a 26-year-old virgin. I was offended by treatment of the boa. <laughs> <laughs> I like how, so wait, he's the offended one now? I love how he is consistent in his replies too, so he has one fan fiction that he built and he uses that extensively. Yeah, he just keeps going on from there. What a what a creative man. <laughs> the fuck is a trisexual? I've never heard that term before. It only exists in, in John's mind. <laughs> it's a tricycle with tits. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I, I don't have any other topics right now. I, I figured I didn't expect them to leave so early. So what do you what do you guys have? Um, let's talk about Death Stranding. <laughs> oh god, no, no, I'm, I'm over kidding. it. That was that was uh, our bonus episode topic. If, yeah, if you want to hear about our thoughts on Death Stranding, you can visit the the bonus episode on patreoncom slash the official podcast. Mm-hmm. We talked about it in detail. Not too much has gone on besides that fight last night, the KSI Logan Paul Part Two. You guys watch that? Mm-mm. I heard that it was it was like on a site that was super super scammy. Like you can't even cancel your membership to the site. Did you hear I about didn't that? Know that? Yeah, yeah, I didn't like, pay for it. When you try to, it's a subscription based model. So when you try to cancel your subscription to the site that offered the live streaming services of the fight, it says your profile is under construction and can't be unsubscribed yet. Return in like a week or so. So obviously they're banking on people just forgetting about it and not not um wow. canceling their subscriptions. Super, That's fucked that's up. Super fuck. scummy. Uh, I I don't know if it's owned like the site D- Dazen D A Z N is owned by. The polls or KSI or whatever, if it's a third party, but it's pretty, yeah, pretty scummy. No, so, sure did you watch it, Charlie? No, I just saw the the highlight reel, if you can call it that. KSI won. Did he win the first one? No, they tied in the first one. Okay, so, so KSI is uh, the, the definitive winner now. Are they are they gonna keep doing this every year? Like, is there another yes. fight scheduled for next year? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sure. So, yeah. so it's literally yeah. just an event now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's right. a really boring one too. They're make, well, they're no, the, bank the, the way they hi- the market it the first time it came around was, oh, it's a fucking grudge match. These two hate each other. Yeah, I guess what it'll be next year. It'll be, it's a grudge <laughs> match again. Logan yeah, Paul wants exactly. revenge. 
It was the first one. It was, oh, it's a fucking grudge match. They hate each other. And then this year it was, it's the rematch because they tied. Oh, my God. Someone has to win. I'm, I'm thinking what when it's KSI versus Logan Paul 19, what are they going to say? They both are, have a free weekend and nothing else to do. <laughs> like, they both want to buy their third mansions. Yeah. It's a really goofy fight, too. Like, whenever they do throw a punch, it turns into this flurry of what you'd imagine a middle school, high school, maybe girl fight would look like, where they start, like, wildly flailing their arms. <laughs> I, like, in the highlights, those were, like, their big moments. Like, for example, KSI threw a punch, and then he followed it up by doing, like, an overhead clob, like he had a caveman's <laughs> club. <laughs> like, it, I don't know how anyone could, like, feel satisfied paying twenty dollars to watch what looks like high schoolers duke it out because they're not there for the fighting obviously they're, they're, they're there for well the they names. are there for the fighting but they're not there for the techniques or yeah, whatever they're there for the name but it's so goofy like the last fight looked more like boxing than this one and they spent like remember, a fucking year training it's mostly for this. teenage girls who give a shit mm -hmm. which is kind of funny because it's fucking boxing but it actually is teenage girls watching more than any other demographic <laughs> a fucking boxing match what? I don't know about that. Yeah. Didn't you see when they were doing the pre-fight crowd amp up thing last year and literally Logan went out and he was like, ah, what's up? And it was nothing but screaming like 12 to 16 year old girls. Don't you remember? Well, that was that was the last fight. This one's for real men because they weren't uh, using you're... headgear like SpongeBob. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Stand back, everybody. Yeah, and it was super goofy, man. Like, I'm serious. Half of the highlights are, like, basically doing a, a Rob the Robot side B where you just spin around with your <laughs> arms to the side. It's fucking goofy, man. Uh, Logan Paul kind of looked like he knew how to fight, but when KSI threw punches, it was, like, wild children. But he still won. So what's that yeah. say? You don't need to be, like, technically proficient at boxing. You just need to go crazy and clobber with your... Your hammer hands or whatever. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it just looks hands. like a sugar rush when he fights. I, I recommend watching the highlights because that's like the majority of the punches. And uh, that's YouTube boxing, baby. Woo! Which two hmm. YouTubers would you like to see box, Charlie? Like, which which two oh. would you actually watch? I'd choose like two that you'd never see like ever fight. Like I'd want them to be virgins, basically that the, have never um, even thrown a punch. Hey, they that pencil neck that eats food. Um, review guy. Oh, review report kid. of the week. Or I was thinking. Yeah, I, I was kind of going of in the, the same the same vein. I was gonna go someone like Rice Gum, super skinny, super cr scrawny, versus someone like a review bra, perhaps. Yeah, oh, I think that would be a really entertaining bra. fight. I think review bras cute though i wouldn't want him hurt. oh he's great yeah. yeah no no i'm just saying as an example i'd choose like that kind of caliber of fight that would be uh, infinitely more fun i was thinking like two two titans like maybe uh what's uh the guy that shoved the banana up his asshole oh amazing atheist titan. yeah like boogie, <laughs> holy boogie shit versus him i forgot that guy even exists how is he a titan isn't he dead yet does he even exist still <laughs> No, I'm sure he's still shoving bananas and hot fudge in his butthole and whatever. Well, well what about like Wings of Redemption and people like I that? Mean, like, ooh, oh, yeah. oh man, Wings of Redemption versus uh, Only Use Me Blade. Yeah, oh, by, oh I paid top dollar. <laughs> Actually, that, that would be I, I would incredible. honestly pay to see yeah. that. I take yeah, that'd be much better. <laughs> Oh, that'd be fucking great. But you can also drink beforehand, so it'd be even better. <laughs> I'll let them get as trashed as they they need yeah. to be to function. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh that'd be a good dude, event. Dude, Amazing Atheist has a, a million event. subscribers, but he gets like 10,000 views on his videos. This guy's dead. This, this channel, channel is dead. Yeah. I don't think yeah, anyone would want to see this guy fight. a dead channel. I would. I mean, if we're trying to sell it as an event, we got to get not dead channels. I yeah, big I need it to be an event. I'll, I'll be in the audience. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Just put on a show for Jackson. He <laughs> doesn't want a private fight. fight. If I was rich, I'd, for I mean, if I was like McAfee or Notch, I'd arrange private fights. Just have these shitheads beat the shit out of one another in my own living room. Send them home patched up. Have a bum fight. Give them some coke. Some alcohol. Speaking of organizing things... I was thinking about talking about ExpressVPN, but I'm going to shut my mouth and let Kaya do all of it. 
Just, that's right, yeah. I mean, if you don't want to get locked into region locks and all that stupid bullshit, which apparently that website did with the, the Logan Paul versus KSI thing, you should get some ExpressVPN slash official in your veins. Um, you know, just like John McAfee, he's very cognizant of his privacy. <laughs> he says that, um, you know, b being the first person who ever created an antivirus, apparently hacking him has become this... Uh, the badge of honor for hackers so he's getting he gets targeted a lot he uses pseudonyms for his accounts he has other people buy his hardware he frequently switches his ip according to him and you can do that too with expressvpn.com slash official um makes it super easy for everyone i don't i usually don't even know the goddamn deal they offer our listeners by heart because i've been using expressvpn for far longer than they have been sponsoring us but um uh, let me look it up it's you get th 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 Jesus. three free months. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting emotional over it. <laughs> that was a major it's case a of deal. mush mouth there. You get three free months of the yearly plan, which is absolutely worth it with a 30 day money back guarantee, by the way, if you, you know, if you don't like it, which I don't know why you wouldn't. But if you go to slash official, you get three free months of the yearly plan. Uh, I pay for it yearly. It's, you know, pay once, set it up, done. For a whole year, you don't have to worry about random websites, social media companies, and other malicious assholes stalking your IP again for a year. I'm going to be spending New Year's in Turkey, by the way. Spoiler alert, I'm going to be in a foul mood. Wikipedia still banned, all porn is banned. The country's basically region locked out of most entertainment, but not yours truly. I'm going to be rocking my Express VPN and living like a civilized man, and it's none of any uh, government's business. What kind of porn I happen to watch, you know, it may involve hammocks, holes, and poop. Uh, expressvpn.com <laughs> slash official, go there, one-click setup. Like I said, avoid, avoid the annoying Legion, uh, region locks, man. Just watch whatever Netflix you want. Don't give websites your IP. It's a good product to use it. I love it. Expressvpn.com slash official. We're all fans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, Kaya. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to Kazakhstan? No. Why? Because Have I was watching Borat. It. Oh, is that Borat's place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. To... Oh, is Kazakhstan not a real place? Yeah. Did I just fuck it up? No, it is real, I think. Wait. Okay. I well, think I, well, Russia absorbed I, it or something. Kazakhstan is real. It's Wait, a very big country. It is real. Is it, is it next to... Turkey? Like, is it bordering Turkey? Because I'm thinking of the it's one that close. borders Turkey, that Enzinstan. Well, no, I think it's Kazakhstan. Yeah, maybe mm. it's Turkmenistan, actually. Actually, yeah, that sounds more, more Neither likely. of those border Turkey, though. Well, it doesn't matter. Have you been to Turkmenistan? No. <laughs> Where is this what? going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> Have you seen Jock McAfee there? <laughs> How about... No, no. Uh, I, w I was watching, like, a, a tour video the other day of of like a youtube travel video and they were touring turkmenistan and it looks like the weirdest location like there's so many golden giant statues and enormous buildings but there's absolutely no one there i, I didn't see a single person walking the streets in any of the videos and the commentator was commentating on on the fact that it was pretty much empty but it's like this super rich country it's mm. it's really it's really interesting i thought you might have had some First had experiences in there <laughs> if it was no. close to Turkey, but I guess not. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint. I So from what I can see on the map here, Turkey does really not border on any place that ends in Stan either. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, well, it's definitely Turkmenistan. I just looked at the map of it. Yeah, okay. it is Turkmenistan. No idea. Well, yeah, I just thought it was super interesting. How much? What would it take for you guys to to visit some place like that and do a travel uh, travel video, like you know, an official man, travel video? You know, man, fee. I have been so fucking, <laughs> I've been so fucking tempted to go to North Korea, but I'm I'm also worried I won't come back. Yeah, what if we what if we do that as a group and see who's who survives <laughs> who the comes longest back or something? Alive. Oh yeah, yeah, great! All these countries that we've what always talked on. shit about. Let's just go. Let's go there on a dare. Fun. Dude, but you're you're pushing my button, Jackson. I've been watching documentaries and all sorts of other shit about North Korea lately. And it's it's just like Turkmenistan, where they just have this giant sprawling capital city that's massive and it's just empty. And and shit is just completely unpopulated and everything is fake. 
and fraudulent. It's it's a really strange thing that some of these yeah. countries get up to just to look powerful. I mean, like, uh, I, I don't want to take it all away from Turkmenistan, but North Korea has uh, a lot of people know that they have fake stores. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they set up, yeah, they set up stores <laughs> so that they they go, yeah, look at our wonderful products. Look, we have we have Sony Walkman and iPhone and it's great. But number one, only the products are displayed in the front windows and displays. There's nothing in the storeroom or the back. And two, nothing is for sale. It's all purely display. You are not allowed to buy anything. And um, what a lot of people don't know is that that extends to fucking grocery stores where they mm -hmm. will have they will have supermarkets, but in the front, their apples and produce they're displaying are plastic and painted. And if you try to buy any food, they say, oh, nope, we don't have any. Surely it's more <laughs> expensive to paint like <laughs> perfect replicas of apples and oranges than it is just to to buy some apples and oranges. Well, the thing is so that those last no. forever. Yeah. Real food does not last more than a week you just have to yeah. set them up once but also but, real food can be eaten and make but, your people happy but yeah, yeah that's true they don't, i don't think they have apples <laughs> yeah not at all the fucking lengths that some of these countries go to to just look powerful or look like they're prospering is fucking absurd north korea just randomly has mandatory ceremonies where people have to stop in the street and start dancing and clapping to the glorious leader they, they have a giant fucking ceremony that's literally thousands and thousands of people doing choreographed dances just to show off the might of North Korea. And they just do it because if you participate, you win like a fridge or a microwave. You know, How is that any different to needs. America with your stadium dances and stuff at college because, football games? Because those are actors and they're paid and that's a job they sign up and want to do. North Korea and they don't is, get hey, murdered. You you do this, yeah, you do this, or else your family fucking starves. <laughs> what kind of question is that? Put on a happy face. <laughs> oh, is that like? Say maybe there's not much different in in America and North Korea. No, I have your eyes have been opened. Yeah. <laughs> Practically the, the same uh, countrywide concentration there's like, camp, America. There's just so much shit that they do. They have I these statues. They have these three statues made of solid gold, all of uh, Kim Jong Un, Kim Il Sung, and uh, Kim Jong Il. And all of them are just these massive, giant golden statues that they could have made hollow or made like look solid gold and imposing, but they filled them with gold. And filled them to make them completely well, heavy and immovable. Well, then why not just buy apples? I, exactly, but they <laughs> do that. It's not that easy, they Jackson. They do that. And in one of the documentaries I watched, the uh, the two the American tourist, he was like, "So, what's with the statues? <laughs> why why did you buy and make these giant fucking statues?" And the tour guide was like, "It's to show that." The glorious leaders care for this country and love for this country and want to give it strength. And then the guy goes, well, why didn't you just make it hollow and paint it? And then like that way you could, you know, use all the stuff you filled it with and materials to fucking buy shit and do stuff. And the tour guide had to really think about it. And then he consulted with his other tour guide. And then he went, <laughs> it's mightier that way. It's more powerful. <laughs> and, and like the whole country just runs on this idea of like, yeah, we're starving, but look how great we're doing. Oh, well, I don't have electricity, but we're so powerful. <laughs> Imagine if you cut into the uh, into the statue and it was actually hollow, but it was full of apples. <laughs> That's where they're hiding the That's food. That's where the apples went. Mm. <laughs> you never it's know just, in North Korea. It's just kind of scary to me to think of being someone that lives under these regimes where, I mean, obviously a lot of the people know that this is fucked up, but there, there is nothing they can do about it. That's just how their system is. Look how privileged we are. These people are going through absolute hell and like can't even buy apples and we're like, oh, I think I'd like to go there on a holiday. I know. <laughs> like, it's, just, I know. it's just fun for oh, us. In, no so shit. here's another one. Uh, here's another one. Jackson got me on this button because I, I am obsessed with this country and I don't know why. There are a bunch of rules when you get to North Korea. They have a literal checklist of like, here's things you should not do while you're here. And some of them are innocuous, like, you know, don't talk bad about the regime. Don't do mm -hmm. this and this like things like, OK, I'm in a dictatorship. I get it. Two of them, though, that are pretty great is the first one is you must respect the media at all times, meaning that number one, if you use a North Korean magazine or newspaper, you're not allowed to fold it. You are not allowed to crumple it. You are not allowed to give it to someone else without being polite and handing it to them directly. 
And uh, number two, you are not allowed to film the North Korean people too intensely. Because you're not What's allowed to show how unhappy they are. So if you try to go to North Korea and film stuff, there's a lot of times that guards or tour guides will get right in front of your camera and be like, no, don't show that. Don't show the people. They don't like it. They think it's rude. When really it's don't show how poor and starving they are. No. It sucks. It fucking sucks. So anyway, to answer your question, Jackson, I would consider going there, but I would be very, very careful. No, they'll kill well, you. I just want to go to t Turkmenistan. I, I mean, it's not... There's no risk of... Well, there is a risk of dying, obviously, anywhere, but there's, it's not as risky as, like, North Korea. I'm sure there's rules you have to follow, obviously, in Turkmenistan, but it looks like the perfect combination of it being extremely, like, uh, power projection-y in a, in a fake way, like North Korea does, but also, like, they won't kill tourists for folding magazines, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's someone uh, Onyx in our Patreon chat just posted the link to it. That was big international news for a while where a, uh, a student went to North Korea on a trip. He like mm -hmm. took a poster off a wall. I don't remember why. I think he wanted it as a Jeez. souvenir. And literally they just threw him in a fucking internment camp for it. Yeah. Otto Warmbier. And then he died. He wanted a poster yeah. as a souvenir and, he, and he got caught and they tortured him into brain death and then sent him back to the US yeah. to his family with brain death and and he died all the afterwards. late night hosts they were very classy about it like John Oliver and Stephen Colbert they made fun of him <laughs> wait really oh yeah I don't remember that I, I don't know which one of them wait, exactly what's... it was but they made fun of his last name warm beer saying it sounded like a frat boy just made it up for fun hmm. yeah that's late night talk shows but, I mean think about it they did that to him for taking a poster off the wall it's, it's just fucking terrifying. If you want to go to North Korea, because I know a bunch of people listening now are very interested. There's also, I believe, only four companies that let you even do it. Like you have to you have to go through a travel agency or they won't approve your travel. And everything is scripted. You are told at all times what you'll be doing every day, where you'll be. Like what activities you'll be engaging in everything. You're barely allowed to wander or explore. It's it's fucked. It's you just can't think about fucked. North Korea without mourning Vice every single time because their documentary is actually interesting about North Korea and then what they have turned into is always <laughs> the second thought I get. It's so sad. Now they're getting people caught because of the metadata and the photos they upload. How, how big of an amateur are you? Honestly, you, met, you meet with an international fugitive and you don't consider that maybe you shouldn't be uploading selfies with them, geotagged to your Twitter, you <laughs> fucking loot. <laughs> Jesus, idiots. Yeah. I would recommend against going to How North Korea. How about you, Korea. Charlie? Charlie, would you ever visit a, a dangerous country? Absolutely not. Jesus Christ. No. Would you ever visit any place <laughs> outside of the U.S.? Yeah. That's a that's a no. If I can't get there by land, then I just don't need to go. <laughs> I'll wait Not until even this by world boat. fucking. Would you? I'll right, wait let me this ask you a question. Folds over for a new Pangea. Let me ask you a question. I I know that you don't fly. Would you take a boat to Japan? No, that's the dumb. I hate when people say that. It's the dumbest fucking thing. Of course not. Well, why not? Hey, that'd be like a six. That'd be a six month boat ride for one. And two, that's like significantly more dangerous for rogue waves, storms, fucking all types of things. Absolutely. Pirates. Then, then why are you not afraid of boats? I, I think he I, said he just, he is. No, why would I be afraid? Of, it's not like I need to go anywhere by boat. If I'm on a boat, it's on like a lake. But they're still dangerous. Yeah, that exact thing you just described could still yeah, happen. Yeah, but if a boat breaks down in a lake, I can swim somewhere. I well, can't do that in the middle so of So what if someone ocean. says, I'll take you out to the ocean, we'll do some deep water fishing, would you do it? There's also the Coast Guard that can come get me if it breaks down, They I can guess, come get you yeah, if you're I've on your way that. to Japan. Well, no, I, I don't think that's yeah, possible. I don't know about that. No, <laughs> There's no that. fucking Coast Guard in the international waters. waters. <laughs> you're going to get torpedoed by some third world country dictatorship like China. They're going to shoot you up with the torpedo and then <laughs> claim that they yeah, thought you were a fucking thing, military course, vessel. Fuck that. I wouldn't get on ships either. There's always horror stories. All, every single time you hear about those big, uh, you know, those big cruise ships 
where suddenly, oh, the motors just stopped working and the plumbing backfired. So now the whole ship is stranded and everything yeah. smells like shit. Do you guys remember that news <laughs> where a bunch of people were stranded? Yeah, there, yeah uh, I think it's the same one, but there was one of the cruise ships that like had like a big catastrophic meltdown. But and then like everyone was ending up like living in the hallways and urine and filth. Yeah, yeah. And they had to, there was this big outbreak Ugh. of like Coscus or something. Oh, my God. Lazy Ugh. fuckers, lazy fucks. They couldn't even lean over the ship to shit into the water. They shit into like the still the backed up toilets. <laughs> what a pack of animals. I imagine that's what Noah's Ugh. Ark must have actually looked like. Disgusting. Ugh, Disgusting. God. That's fucked up. I don't uh, know. I just, I want to go see, I don't want to go, I want to go see interesting places like, like different, different places, I guess. Like we you can all see do. Interesting that's not the problem. Without the risk of death. It's. I hate the travel part of it. I would also like to see mm -hmm. countries as oh, long yeah. as they're safe and there's no risk of me getting raped and killed or something, but... You're yeah, in Turkey. That's the big one. <laughs> I'm in Germany right now. <laughs> Wait, I mean, you lived in Turkey. Yeah, yeah, he's in Germany right now, but next week when he's back, he'll be like, I love traveling in Turkey where I feel safe and will never be raped. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would prefer to go to Turkmenistan than Turkey. From what <laughs> you told me. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, well, I was going to say something, but I don't want to implicate yeah, myself. I'm just that, saying, that I think we still have more journalists in prison than anyone else. Maybe China beat us, but I'm not that sure. That could be a fun little little trip for the four of us. We pick a country none of us has been to or have any experience with, and we all just well, go. Well, that's pretty much every country apart from America, I guess. Well, I'm not going to go to Australia. Well, you dick. It's well, fun here. No, I meant if we're doing this, I'd love to visit you in Australia. Well, yeah, well then only Australia, Germany, Turkey, and America are off the list then. Everywhere else is free game, right? That's true. Oh, I'd love for Let's you to guys to come to Turkey. Let's go to North Korea. <laughs> I'd love to drive you guys just out into the middle of some sprawling city in Turkey and just leave you there and see if you can find a way home. Oh, that's God. Nice. oh, that sounds fun. That would genuinely <laughs> really upset me. <laughs> we'll end up at your house in boxes. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. There's, there's few things you can do to make me an enemy for life, but Kaya, I think you found one. <laughs> You know what we could do that would that would put us on the map? It would put us in the history books. Walking from one side of Africa all the way over to the other side of Russia because it's all connected by land. That was oh, actually a, a thing. Journey. That was a thing. That was a game show in Japan. Oh. Yeah. So uh, that's another awesome thing I learned about a while ago. There was this game show in Japan that got canceled because they had more better human rights laws enacted in like the late 90s, early 2000s for TV shows. But there was this show where the whole point was to give people impossible, horrible challenges. Uh, and one of them was a guy had to hitchhike his entire way across Africa. Yeah, and just literally, yeah, literally, like, even if he was kidnapped or any of that, just that's it. You're done. Dropped right, well, we could make it. We could make it cooler then. What about one? Well, by cooler, I mean easier and less uh, less dangerous. One side of the U.S. to the other, walking across. Now that I'm sure has been done. That is absolutely. Been yeah, done. but we yeah. could live stream it all or something. Nah. That'd be fun. That'd be the most boring fucking trip ever. Just walking yeah. for 18 months. But, but so then that's, you're meant to make it interesting. Though. I mean, that's, that's the catch you. is if it's not dangerous, it's going to be boring. Who the fuck wants to watch you hitchhike? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's fair. I'm going back to the uh, Africa to Russia kind of one. We'd have like to that. do if we're going to do that, we'd have to do like a decent camera set up. So at the very least, we could get good landscape shots. That'd be the only thing to salvage that. I'm Other down for it. Yeah. yeah, that'll be nice for all the that'd be one for the dogs who will cut our way and beat the shit out of us. At least they'll get some nice equipment out of it when we get robbed. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking stream snipers too that just want to get the equipment so they don't have to worry about like the chance they could just find us through watching the streams. God. All right, I let's do let's really do cool some challenge. math here real quick. Let's do uh oh god ugh. Talk amongst yourselves. I just realized what you're basically proposing is we do numbers. a real life death stranding. Ew. Just walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh baby. <laughs> with a bunch of equipment. Would you get Kojima to make the trip with us? Hmm? Okay. So to walk from uh, Los Angeles, California to one of the, probably the most eastern city in Maine, like right on the border of Canada, 
mm-hmm. is 1,055 hours of walking. How many days is that? I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, let's see here. 1,050 divided by 24. Well, I did minus, so I got 1,031 <laughs> days. <laughs> Uh, it's 43 days, roughly. 43 days of walking, and also this route includes having to take a ferry because you have to cross water. Oh, well, that's cheating. No, you'd well, have to go around. All right, hang like, on. Let me add a pit stop in Washington, D.C., so that way you have to go a certain way. Okay. Ooh, so if yeah, you... swimming could be good. Or, or, all right, I will accept it if you get... Like, you're not allowed to use anything else, so if we built our own kayak to cross the river... I Why mean, the like, fuck would we do that? <laughs> Why? Jesus. I, think, I think it sounds cool. I don't want to do that. There is nothing cool about that. Like, if if somebody said they were going to do that, I think people would watch for one hour and never tune in again until they get to the no, destination. I, if they get there. I think they would tune in constantly. But I get, there's just no danger. What's Why? the point of every that? television? You just want people to watch you hitchhike. That's boring. Well, yeah, I'm still talking about the Africa one, mainly. Oh, Why yeah, do you want to well, hitchhike across Africa? Because it's more dangerous. You have to fight lions. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that'll be a good fight. <laughs> yeah. The- <laughs> so, so what, we started We started in Cape Town, South, Af- South Africa, and we have to go all the way to... Uh, no, see. I'm thinking of, like, Sierra Leone. I can't, like how do you pronounce Neil- this? La Verentia Arbachtener, Russia? I think you pronounce it, yeah. you're going to get your skull slit open in Somalia. After they kidnap you and nobody pays your ransom. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's do the math on this one. Jackson, if we were to walk from Cape Town, South Africa, which is the southernmost South African city. Uh, you should go you should go eat uh, the westernmost, like over near That is the Sierra- it's the southwest coast. Um, no, so, but go to Sierra Leone, that'd be longer. Okay, Free hang time. on, hang on. I'm flying across the world here. Okay. Freetown, Sierra Leone to to okay, so from Leventia. there to Laventria, Russia, which mm-hmm. is their most eastern city. Literally, it's like you can see Alaska from it if you really yeah. tried. If you Give squinted. Me how many hours? Hang on, it's calculating. <laughs> we could not calculate this walking route. <laughs> see? We would be the first. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me we try. Wouldn't see, we wouldn't complete it, Jackson. We'd die within Whatever. the first two what? days. If it, we could have security following us or something, oh, then what's yes, the point? The security. Well, the the security could be overrun. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know. I'm, okay, I hang still on. like the. Hang uh, on. Okay, I got it. I got it. From hmm. from Cape Town to y- Yakutsk, Russia, which is not as eastern, but is the eastern most major city, is four thousand fifteen hours. 4,050. So it would take us 168 days to walk that, Jackson. Uh, yeah, that's not a- That bad. is half a year if we never stopped walking. <laughs> so let's say a year. With <laughs> Literally breaks. never stopped walking. That's like that's, that's a year with playtime. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine how many countries and, and people we'd meet and probably get Who'd want to kill us? Fuck that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, God. I'll skip that. How about. I- I'm still down to start an Indiegogo and get Pitcairn Island, Pedophile Island. It hasn't come up in a while, but that's still somewhat of an ambition that I have. That's feasible. Right. Yeah, that's, How that's is that feasible. feasible. It's 50 of Dude, them. that island is valueless. Yeah, it's a literal valueless li- island. No island is valueless. Yeah, that, okay, so that's fair. It it's, it's real estate. It's, uh, I mean, it would be our island. That's a lot of value, but I'm saying that. It's not unfeasible to take it from 50 aging people who are oh, all so disarmed. You mean take it. Huh? You, you could probably it, buy it. it. No, you could absolutely buy this. It, it'd be a bit of haggling, I imagine. I feel like the... these pedophiles would want a fair bit of coin to be displaced from their pedophile island. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not. Well, the, the island isn't like home of pedophilia. They just happen to be pedophiles on an island. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> What's the difference yeah, there? Just because it's called Pedophile Island doesn't mean that it's a home of pedophilia. Well, uh, yeah. So that's a problem. I, I wonder if they have sued Epstein because Epstein also has his own pedophile island. Uh, Had. Oh, good point. Ooh. 
too soon, Andrew. His <laughs> estate still owns it. <laughs> Ooh, you got me. Um, yeah, man, we should take it over. I think technically the British own it, the Queen owns it or some shit, but I, I feel yeah. like we could take it without but, her even noticing. And does she really keep oh, track? Oh, for sure. I wonder if they even check in with the fucking people. I, I highly doubt it. So for everyone asking me... Yeah, apparently me, no one's even visited it. No, oh, dude, it's super easy to visit. I mean, if you go to their website, they practically beg you to get a visa to go there to visit them and spend money there <laughs> they have like they don't even have hotels they just let you stay at people's houses in their rooms and shit oh yeah that's what i want <laughs> oh dude i mean it's almost adorable how easy it would be to conquer them the other theory I guess was we could walk across pitcairn island that's about as risky and you dangerous always want to walk across jackson Africa. we yeah, have cars fuck? and boats and trains because it's a challenge you're gonna get big leg muscles my challenge is gonna be seeing how many pedophiles i can beat in one minute not not seeing how long well, it you takes don't know me the condition of these pedophiles yeah, Andrew. They, they could be walking across that island Fuck. daily they could be way way fitter than you didn't know these discuss, pedophiles live on an island they're they're didn't these once discuss that fucking little boys is like the actual key to mortality and that's why they're doing it some long well, you want episode the key to ago. Immortality? Why would you want the key to mortality? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but we, we went over this. Remember, they all had to be disarmed when they got caught fucking, like, or watching kitty porn or something on the two kilobit connection that they have on the set. That too, I mean, they have a satellite internet connection and the first thing they do is download porn, but it's all centralized too. I mean, their whole electrical grid is run by one aging man who's gonna die anytime soon. Uh, one fan I remember at the time suggested that since there's only like 51 people on the island, all it would really take is 51, uh, 52 of us moving there legally and then outvoting the local government. <laughs> then we can just <laughs> democratically take it over. <laughs> Become the mayor. I some like Civ 5 shit. Yeah. <laughs> Kick them off the island. I love, oh my god, I should do some research on that island and do like a presentation on this podcast. The whole it, It's all coming back to me now. The whole island started because of a shipwreck too, because a bunch of fucking <laughs> prisoners got shipwrecked on the island and they just started a colony. <laughs> now it's a pedophile colony. It's like what the a beginning of a sci-fi movie. <laughs> It's like the, it's Aww, like a, like seriously you can you can imagine watching this show and the narrator before every episode is like these prisoners were shipwrecked on an island not knowing what to do they became pedophiles like yeah, that's it's just like, how it starts it's like lost. Shame. you said fifty two people lived there it's now down to fifty oh, oh man two of them grew up <laughs> two of them grew up and got shipped away yeah exactly sent out the <laughs> island excommunicated. <To> prison <laughs> excommunicated uh. Oh. All right, do you guys want to wrap up? Uh, yeah, let's wrap yeah, up. Yeah, we should. Okie dokie. Right, thank you, everyone, for listening to this week's episode. We've got bonuses over at patreon.com slash the official podcast. What did we talk about there? We talked about Death Stranding. Uh, um, there was one other big topic we talked about. Oh, we did the whole, lot. is this boomer, zoomer, millennial, or Kojima topic that thing. One. There was clapping getting banned. Mm. Uh, yeah. Fuck, I don't remember the uh, the rest. We had a lot of fun topics, and we judged whether or not we were boomers or zoomers about it, if that tickles your fancy. Spoiler alert, we're boomers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one vote for Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can head on over there. There's like 50 episodes worth of bonus content over there. More than enough to fill your need for official officiality. We'll try to get... John McAfee on again. Sorry that it was only 30 minutes. That kind of, yeah. that kind of sucked. But it was still we'll super get, fun. We'll probably get him on again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we he was will. Great guest. A lot of fun. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Later. Bye.